Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Seso TikTok. For the record, I know like for the, also if you guys are on that way too often, you guys got to get your priorities straight cuz me, I'm not on that cuz I got my priorities straight for sure. Now, with that being said though, occasionally on the TikTok I get a TikTok dance, I get some satisfying videos, but I also get some really cool Photoshop tutorials that I want to show you guys as well that you can probably use right now. So let's just let's go look at them and do it. So the first video is let's did it easy glass line effect overlay English is hard anyway starts off with a nice little rectangle here We're using a little gradient overlay um, uh, Okay, little zero angle. Okay simple reverse Okay, okay, so it's like a displacement effect. Yeah, I, I thought it was actually with like the freaking I thought it was duplicating it over and over again and moving it Save it as PSD gotcha. So okay, this is actually probably pretty easy put in the picture I'm guessing filter displace and all that good stuff um filter gallery glass texture blocks load your psd nah hold up that's what that little that's what that is i gotta click more buttons in photoshop because that is sick screw it let's figure it out let's do it ourselves so rectangle i'm just gonna make my own Control shift n Filter that baby back in, put this on black. I'm sure it doesn't really matter. Then a gradient overlay, black to white, scale at 100%, zero angle, reverse. Okay, bang, I did it. All right, so I duplicate it, alt drag, just like so, and duplicate this a few times. Now we're gonna save this as a PSD. All right, so all that scene that is left is we load in our picture, go to filter, filter gallery, go over to distortion, glass. Now, of course, he's on blocks for the texture, puts it on load texture. We're gonna find my texture. And then he has his, the scaling is at like 121, distortion's at 12, and then smoothness is at seven. Mine is not looking like that. Oh, oh, scaling, oh, hold on. Scaling goes down. I actually get closer, kind of like rectangles together. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so maybe my settings need to be a little bit changed. Something like that. I kind of like that, right? That's pretty much the effect. And then he, of course, duplicates it. I put the one below it, turn off the filter, take the first one with the actual filter on it, use a layer mask, take it in half and just find a nice little split. And then boom. Yeah, I'll take it. Honestly, I do think in the right setting, I think his photo that he has, like, has like a purple background, looks a little bit more like just like significant for this effect, like a makeup kind of ordeal of some sort, but I don't know if the black background's doing it. However, the effect is true, it's real, and we also just learned I can use freaking textures in Filter Gallery, so I'll take that as a W. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, I don't know about you, but this is kind of sick. That's just me. That's me. All right, so for the next one, we have Swoop and Nebula on how to get a realistic fire effect in Photoshop. So am I trying to get a stuff, fiery stuff in Photoshop? Yeah, what about it? You know what's easier on your way? Really, can you show me I got you? Okay, I was a little bit, took a little bit long time to get in there. Uh, select your layer, filter, flame, adjust the length, turbulence, opacity, repeat steps for God. Slow down. Now I know how it feels. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. This is not gonna help me unless I start pausing and playing. Just layer mask levels, clouds in there for the opacity. I'm trying to mental check everything. Let's just give it a shot. So the first part looks easy. So first off, we're gonna select, we're gonna right click, and then of course make a work path. Use three pixels, I'm gonna press okay. Now three, kind of mess with my logo just a little bit. I might've used four next time around, but I'm gonna use three, cause that's what he did. So after that, make a new layer, go to filter, render flames and then he said mess with the length opacity and strength or something like that so length i'm guessing is this something like 44 looks pretty okay everything else he kept the same he went to advance mess with the turbulence which is really nice i like the jad whatever the jad is i'm gonna whatever i love that opacity i'm not gonna go too high press okay so he did that and then he made multiple different ones he made two of them so i'm gonna make another one really quickly as well okay then afterwards he applies a quick mask goes to filter render clouds and adjust the mask level mask mask level to adjust the strength of each layer okay I'm guessing here levels adjustments use levels like so on the on the actual mask to kind of mess with this. I mean, I don't really enjoy this part of it. I mean, I kind of like that. I'm gonna press okay. I might even save over, back over here to properties and lower the density a little bit. However, on the one below it, he actually ended up using, what is it called? Adjustments and then he used, uh, he used, what is it? Where is it? And why can't I use it? 
Oh, okay. So he changed the density of the second one's levels a little bit. So he kind of, you got to tweak with this. He pressed okay. Then he went to his actual original layer and then went to adjustments again. And then use what do you call it? Uh, hue and saturation and then lower the lightness to add some depth. So after we've done something like that, I don't really like the, 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 the you know, the, the edges of this. Why does it look so kind of crappy? I don't know, but I'm also going to probably add some adjustments, uh, a little bit of a kind of like a saturation boost here. Maybe just a slightly different kind of tone. Maybe like fire it up a little bit more, just like something like that. Press OK. I like that. OK. Select everything. Duplicate. And then merge it into a nice little, what do you call it? Smart object. Then he uses some duplicate, apply a Gaussian blur and blending modes for the glowy effect. So you duplicate, go to over here, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Maybe like four or five looks pretty good. I'm going to press OK. Then he puts his on screen. That's kind of all he did. And to be honest, like if for the record though, let me get rid of this pencil pad for a second. For the record, do I think I can do this better by using like little strokes of flames and whatnot? Absolutely not. And for the record, I also didn't use as many blend modes as him. So I'm guessing if I like moved over here, kind of erased a few of these things a little bit, like kind of like added some my own depth in like little spots like this, right? I can probably make it look pretty cool. So, I mean, I learned something about flames, which I never really used, but this is actually kind of sick, so I'm gonna take it. Also, the make work path thing was actually pretty clutch for this too, I'm not gonna lie. All right, the last one's actually pretty sick. So this third one here is by Let's Did It. Again, oh, it's him again. This guy's kind of crazy. So smudge gradient Photoshop tutorial, nice vintage portrait, control J on the image, on a black and white image, motion blur, a nice two angle with 83 or so pixels. Might have to change that a little bit. Make another duplicate, use another motion blur, but change the distance probably like a times, ink math, like seven or so, I don't know. And then a gradient overlay. Oh, that's a cute gradient. That's actually pretty sick too. For the record, I actually tried this and got hella memed on Twitter. I did like not try this effect, but like a gradient or a blur. So now I'm like really scared of blurring things because I'm just scared of it. But in this aesthetic, it looks pretty cool. So let's try it. All right, so I got my photo. So the first thing this person actually ends up doing is using their uh, rectangle marking tool, splits it in half, and then presses Control J. Okay, I do the same. Now afterwards, he goes into blur, filter, blur, motion blur at around two angle and right about 83 or so oh for the record i meant i might want to do it on her face hold on hold on perfect now it's only on half the face so i want to kind of it looked better on half the face i kind of like that idea uh angle at two 83 pixels just like so press okay now we're gonna make another duplicate filter blur gaussian blur not gaussian blur motion blur again same exact angle however this time we up this baby up to like 200 or 469 and then last but not least we apply a gradient overlay so gradient map just like so. And he has some really pretty freaking gradients, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm guessing the one he did is it's blue highlight. So this way over here is like a blue highlight. Then he has like a nice orange. I'm kind of copying this, but I'm, I'm gonna do it. Watch this. A burgundy-ish red, it's like a darker-ish red. And then black. Boom. Oh. Hey, yo. That's kind of fire. I also really hit that. Yo, I actually really got the gradient pretty well. That's a fire gradient. To be honest, I also know how to use gradients. That's the only reason why I probably understood what it was going for. But yo, that is so sick. A new gradient, thank you. Um, Yo, that's actually kind of fresh. I'm not gonna lie. That's a super dope. I, I probably, if I did this instead of what I did before, it might've not got a meme, but I think the gradient really helps sell it. So honestly, this effect is pretty freaking sick. So we wanted some really cool photo effects. That one's, this one's, that was a hit for sure. All right, so for the last video, we have Andre, not gonna do the last name, but RGB split effect, also known as chromatic abrasion for the record. I thought it was pretty cool to show you guys. So it's like an older kind of thing, but in the right setting, it can be kind of sick. So duplicate layers, the, the first layer, you turn off everything besides the red, then you kind of move it to the left. Then the second layer, you turn off everything the, besides the green or the blue, excuse me, and then you move it to the right. And you get this really cool, simple little like uh, chromatic abrasion. Let's do it really quickly. So I have this poster in front of me. Now I'm gonna duplicate it one, two times so on the top one, just like so, double click on it. Turn off everything besides the red. You move it over there, boom. You move in, go left twice, just like so. And then the one in the middle, you click on everything besides the blue. Then you move this to the right, boom, boom. And look at that. It's really, really simple. Honestly, if you look at the words right here, this is probably the coolest part, like on like a nice cool graphic like this. It just makes it look a little bit kind of like old school. But the one thing is actually, is I saw another TikTok that said how to do a CRT monitor effect in Photoshop that I think might go pretty well with this because this part's pretty simple and easy. But this guy is swoop once again. So you add like a Gaussian blur, duplicates a layer, separates them, you know, chromatic abrasion, blah, blah, blah. Then he uses the, uh, the rectangle tool to create these kind of things, okay? 
He's in a new layer now. Okay, so new layer, boom, just like so. I'm gonna put a little bit more space in between it. Use the crop tool to make sure I only crop just around it, just like so. Then he sets the image size, so it goes to image, image size, and he sets the resolution to eight. Press okay. This is what? So now if I zoom in, it's just like really, really bad. But once I've done this, I can make this into a pattern. So edit pattern, where's pattern at again? Get define pattern, and we call this CRT, press okay. Then we go back over here to this, this window. I create a new layer, go to window pattern, select my CRT pattern, which actually looks pretty freaking wild. Okay. Then clip mask it to all the different layers. So technically, I guess, do I have to do that? So yeah, I'm not actually sure if I need all of these. I actually might only need to do one of these, right? Just like so. And then have this, of course, smart object all together like this, right? And now I go over here, change the blend mode to like, anything i'm not really sure if these blend modes even kind of work to be honest it, it doesn't look bad or whatever it just has a little bit too much going on here but if i keep it on normal change the uh what do you call it blend if hold alt kind of split these anchors a little bit kind of give myself a nice cool effect something like this i don't know press okay i mean this is the overall effect like with the actual chromatic abrasion plus this effect here it looks pretty cool. However, with that being said, as the end of the video here today, so honestly, you guys let me know. I, this, I, TikTok's back and forth, we can do it. If you guys want me to, you just gotta tell me to. Anyway, shout out all the creators because the other do some really cool stuff on TikTok. I just wanna bring it over to YouTube and show you guys some pretty cool stuff that you can learn. You should also go follow them all. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a wrap. Let's uh, hope you guys learned something. Anyway, so HQ out. You know how I can... You never get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Little much love. Peace. Enjoy your day.